voters on the north side. The first candidate to answer this question will be Bologna. Number one again. I'm sorry, let me um, adjust the time here. You all will have one minute to answer I, these questions. I know, I thought it was so quick. But here's the thing. Level three sex offenders, if we want the state to change things, imagine that they're not going to change the things so quickly. And so we have some options that we have to think about. One is we have, we as a city have to just sue the county and the state. We have to sue them and make them enforce their laws correctly. Two is we have to just accept the fact that this is the case and we're going to ask the state legislature for money so that we can build a group home so that we can house all the levels three sex offenders in one place so that we know where they're all, they are at all times and that we know where they are going to be at all times. And the thing is that what we have here is we have a solution where basically level three sex offenders are everywhere in North Minneapolis. The concentration here is so ridiculous compared to anywhere else and we've kind of just allowed that to just be the case and we haven't pushed hard enough and I would say sue them or tell them to give us more money so that we can solve the problem on our own. Thank you. The next candidate to answer this question will be Kale Severson. You know, I, I had a great time. Ray Dean is one of my favorite people and I've and him had lots of conversations around this and I, and, and I truly believe that I hope he finds a way with and whoever's on next city council, they need to go back to where they came from. So if you're if you if you register in Anova, Anova needs to deal with that problem after you, you know, come out of jail. I, I, I'm completely frustrated when I sit and talk to Lynn Crockett, who has a thousand grandchildren, and right now she, she's not comfortable letting them go outside because right down the block there's ten offenders in one apartment building. But the apartment building owner loves it, the landlord. Because guess what? She gets her rent every month, and they're the best. They're the best tenants. Well, yeah, because it comes from the county. That's why you're getting your rent every month. So you know they need to come back from where they came from, and, and, and I think that'll lessen the, the sex offenders. Sex offenders aren't just coming from North Minneapolis; they're coming right. from everywhere. Right. So uh, if you offended Duluth, Duluth needs to figure out the solution for that. And, and as, as a community, North Minneapolis will figure out a way to deal with our sex offenders. Thank you. Brett Buckner. Minneapolis, North Minneapolis has been dumped on far too long. We have our more than our fair share, and it's time to share with the rest of the city, the rest of the county. So right after that, working with our 12 other colleagues, we're going to start to spread the responsibility. Not only in the city of Minneapolis, but then we take it to the county and say, it's time to start pulling up your share as well if we're talking about creating an equitable society, an equitable Minneapolis. If we're talking one Minneapolis, but we're dumping and putting the responsibility on, on a community, then that's not fair. So we're going to start standing up and start saying that ain't right. That simple. It's going to be shared. The pain, the pleasure, everything is going to be shared from this point on. I think I already have a good number of our city council colleagues talking about this and understanding that they are going to have the responsibility to take some of the pain that we've been experiencing for the past decades. Thank you. Finally, Ian Alexander. Well, I think Brad said it right when he said uh, when he used the words fair share. And actually, I spoke to Mike Freeman, our county attorney, not that long ago, and he agreed. The north side, particularly zip code 55411, has a disproportionate number of sex offenders. And one of the issues um, that Kale, that you addressed, that he actually talked about, was that, uh, you know, you people, when you get it right now, when you currently get out, when you're incarcerated, you get out of the system, you get to go wherever you are within a certain jurisdictional area. And I think that needs to change. I think there needs to be some regionalism when it comes to where someone I do have to say, and this is really never a good story to tell, uh, when I first, don't worry, it's not that bad, uh, when I first moved to Minneapolis, I lived at uh, 3637 Emerson Avenue, which was um, where a former sex offender lived. So about once every month, someone would knock on my door at 7.30 in the morning, it was a police officer, 
asking me if I knew where some Alexis guy was. And my point was the fact that this happened so frequently showed me right there that the system had to be broken because constantly they were looking for the same person. They were constantly knocking on my door. Sorry, you'll have to finish answering that. 